Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called Put Jesus in the Picture. So, it's like sometimes I get visions of Jesus with me. It's not like I see him physically, but it's almost like you get this kind of a sense that he's here, or you might get something like some kind of a picture in your mind or something. And it's not just the picture that's important, it's God speaking to you powerfully through the picture. It's like the way God speaks to people in the Bible through visions. So it's like sometimes I can even like see a vision of Jesus in the room when I'm making the video. He's sort of like my director or something. He's, he's standing there looking at me, giving a nod or something. Yeah, this is what I want you to do. Yeah, keep up the good work. But it's not just seeing sort of a vision. It's hearing his voice say that. You know how sometimes you get this feeling like somebody's watching you, you turn around, there is somebody watching you? Well, you get that kind of a feeling that he's in the room, and then you get his voice speaking to you. My sheep hear my voice, I know them. <laughs> Saying something like, uh, well, I'm glad you're obeying me to do something important, like maybe make a truth teaching or something. Keep up the good work. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven to hear Jesus say to us, Well done, good and faithful child. Or good or well done, good and faithful bride. We can hear that now. So I'll explain a bit about putting Jesus in the picture. What I, what I mean by that is it's like think of what you see with your eyes as like a picture. Put Jesus in there. Understand the presence of God with you doesn't have to be just Jesus. It could be Father God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the angels. Because <laughs> the Bible says they're invisible, but it says they're here. So we need the supernatural ability to put God in our pictures, Jesus in our picture. So the first time I ever heard of visions, I was at a missionary school. We were having a teaching on intercessory prayer, and in the teaching, it was on video, some guy said that he had a vision when he went to a prayer meeting. And this was his vision. This was the first time I ever heard of anybody having a vision. <laughs> he said that, I was having this vision of Jesus weeping over in the corner when I was at a prayer meeting. And in the vision, I went over to Jesus and I asked him, why are you weeping, Jesus? And Jesus said to him at the prayer meeting, because I'm not invited. I'm not invited. So even hearing about somebody else's vision, can God can speak to you. Yeah, he can teach you something great through it too. And you didn't even have the vision. So I always thought, wow, it'd be nice to have visions like that after hearing this guy tell that vision. And then God started showing me visions myself. It's not like I say, God, give me a vision now. I don't do that. God, give me a prophecy now. I don't do that kind of stuff. Sometimes God just kind of starts giving you a vision and you're thinking, what's this? I start to see something. What does this mean, God? And he starts explaining it to you. And you get some really awesome knowledge out of it. Most like prophecy. It's like you just hear God saying, I'd like to tell these people these words or something. And the words start coming in your mind. You start writing it down <laughs> or speaking it out. And uh, a, a prophecy comes out. It's just part of doing God's work. It's like these videos. I don't know what to say. I got a title, put Jesus in the picture. I'm trying to let God put some thoughts in my mind to speak him out now. And hopefully there are going to be some, um, some good truth teaching or encouraging thoughts for people from God. From the experiences I've had and him bringing them back to me and me explaining them to 
other people on a video. It's like I like to listen to my own videos on audio <laughs> or watch them occasionally to learn something, <laughs> to remember something as a meditation, as a good truth teaching to study. So I'm making a lot of these videos. What I got to do in the future is go back over the long ones and maybe um, put down where some good parts were, like the best parts of these long videos, and then make them into shorter videos. People don't have a very high attention span for truth teaching, unless it's really good, I guess. They really hear God speaking to them throughout. So I want to make shorter ones with on certain topics. I don't want to keep repeating myself in front of on video. Uh, just if I feel like there's something I've missed, I can always repeat the old teachings on good topics. I don't have to keep doing the same one over and over again. Anyways, I'm trying to get back to this uh, topic of put Jesus in the picture. So I tried to make a hat, make Jesus great. So that's sort of like putting him in the picture, making him great in your mind. Instead of, well, oh, Jesus isn't very important, he's invisible, he's nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Instead of, Jesus is everywhere, Jesus is almighty, all-powerful, awesome, great. We don't need to make the world great to feel great. We need to make Jesus great to feel great. <laughs> We don't need a good world to feel great. It could be a hellhole and we can still feel great with Jesus. So that's what we need to do. We need to make Jesus great in our life. We need to put him in the picture in our life. <laughs> and uh, Satan doesn't want us thinking Jesus is real. Satan doesn't want us thinking he's here right now. Satan doesn't want us putting Jesus in the picture of what we see in life making him most important, putting the cross in the picture, putting God as love in the picture, putting the truth in your mind, in your daily life. It's like I have like different, uh, what do you call it, word pictures on my walls. I'm looking at one now, it says, today I choose joy. This one says love. There's a footprints poem in the front room. There's a little baby in somebody's arms that says God's in control in it, like a really tiny baby. I made a few signs up. Uh, the best is yet to come, <laughs> thinking about heaven. Another sign says, uh, God helps me through it. And another sign says, Faith. Then I got this little thing, it's like a mountain that says uh, if you have faith, like a uh, mustard seed, you can move a mountain or something on top of my stove. <laughs> little reminders around me of uh, God. Even got a little sign up in my bathroom that says if you see God with all of your heart, you find him. Scripture. So that's one way to put Jesus in the picture. to uh, maybe have some signs around in your apartment that uh, point your mind to Jesus. I also got a license plate that says you got a friend in Jesus too on the wall. Never expires. So God's given me a lot of visions with Jesus in it. Me and Jesus sitting on a bench talking about what the future will be like, like World War III, and then me and Jesus dancing around it, and him saying, don't let it bother you, Rod, I control it. There's one where there's me and Jesus in the boat, and we're looking at a, sort of like a city on fire on the coast, and Jesus just points to me and he says, uh, you're safe with me, Rod. Because I'm looking at this fire getting a little bothered by it. So there's a lot of visions I have in my life where maybe Jesus has got his arm around me or he's holding my hand. 
like one vision where Satan was sledgehammering my toes and Jesus had his arm around me and was holding my hand saying, it's good for you, Rod, it's good for you, Rod. Because uh, when you try to obey God, Satan tries to stop you. And uh, you can go through quite a bit of sifting like wheat by Satan, which can be good for you. When you're trying to obey God, the war gets hotter or whatever. And uh, But if you just keep pressing through it, you'll win. Because if you're with Jesus, you always win. Satan, every evil person on earth could be coming against me, but if Jesus is with me, I win. He just has this think a thought and they disappear. I'm not trusting in my ability to do things. I'm trusting in Jesus with these ability to do things, and there's nothing too difficult for Jesus to do. So that's what we need to do, try to put Jesus in the picture. It's like sometimes I'll get this vision of Jesus walking ahead of me. I'm like following him. Like Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. And I'm kind of, well, I gotta stay behind you, Jesus. Just, uh, I'll keep my eyes on you. You show me where to go. I don't know where I'm going today. It's like Abraham going out, not knowing where you're going. You don't know what's going to happen down the road. But you feel like, God's telling you, go do this, or Jesus is telling you, go do this, and you're trying to follow him to do it. It's like making this video. I wasn't planning on making this video this morning, but uh, I was looking at the title of a possible title to do a video up in the future on a piece of paper, put, uh, put Jesus in the picture because he's taught me some stuff on that. And I thought, well, I guess I, maybe I should make that one soon. Oh, maybe I should make it now. <laughs> And so that's what I'm doing now. Put Jesus in the picture. There was one vision I had recently where uh, I was looking at the internet screen and I started getting this vision of Jesus out, outside my bedroom in the living room on the couch saying, um, come be with me, Rod. And I thought, well, I'm kind of busy here, doing some, something, something on the internet. You want me to shut it off and go in the living room and uh, be with you or something? And that was what the vision was trying to teach me, that uh, when I call you, I'm, I want you to stop what you're doing and put your attention on me, put me into your picture, not just be looking at an internet screen without thinking about Jesus or something. It's like we have to try to do what's most important to do. It's like we can't uh, like skip the prayer times, skip the Bible study, skip the video making or whatever Jesus is telling us is most important to do. To do other things, to watch movies on the TV or surf the internet for not very important things. It's like we have to sit down with a blank piece of paper and ask Jesus, what's most important to do? Start writing stuff down as he gives us direction to. And then we got a kind of an idea of what things are most important for us to be doing in our life and then try to continue to be in a good habit of doing those things. It's like when you're surfing the internet or something, it's like you got to have like a bookmark page and you got to kind of, these are the kind of sites that I'm going to go to and try to learn something from, or I'm going to have a YouTube channel to try to teach people some of the truth God's taught me or something. And you just stay in this kind of a small bookmark um, place on the internet. You don't kind of be moving out to search for other things all the time, new stuff. It's like you sort of don't think there's a whole lot of stuff, good stuff on the internet anyways, and you found a few things that you like um, learning things from or doing on the internet, like managing a YouTube channel or something. A common thing sometimes. And uh, you don't try to stray from that. You don't try to get forget about that or something. You don't try to waste your time doing other unimportant things. That's what Satan would like us to do. So we've got to 
find out from Jesus what's most important to do and then get busy doing that. Be in the habit of doing that. Don't try to stray from that. And that'll keep us close to Jesus. And uh, the closer we are to Jesus, it's like the more we can get visions from him and uh, revelation and knowledge from him. It's like if we don't read the Bible, we're going to miss out on a lot that God could have taught us by his Holy Spirit as we read it. If we're waiting for the pastor to teach us what the Bible teaches, they're usually about half wrong or something, and you're just... And God allows you to be deceived that way. Unless you want to dig into it yourself and let seek Jesus to help you to understand what's really taught there, you're not going to learn very much, unless you've got a super Bible teacher that's correct or something. I don't seem to find many of them around, but uh, that's why i got to dig into the Word myself and try to let Jesus help me to understand what it, it's explaining. You got to remember the author of the Bible, the Holy Spirit, is with you. He can guide you into all truth. So we need to be able to allow God to help us to more visualize Him in our life. It's like if the Bible says, if you seek God with all of your heart, you'll find Him. Now He's invisible, but you'll find His presence. You might find visions of Him. You might find revelations of Him. It's like searching for Scripture in the Bible, and then you're getting this awesome revelation from it. God knows what's best for us. He's the perfect truth teacher. If we want to learn the truth that he wants to teach us, he'll teach it to us. If we don't want to learn it, we'll be ignorant of it. God would like us to become more wise like he is wise. And do good, loving things like he does good, loving things. But he's not going to force us. We have to choose to seek him to help us to do that. It's like... If I wasn't a Christian, or before I became a Christian, I couldn't care less about the Bible or prayer. Once I became a Christian, I thought, oh, this Bible's interesting, important to read. Because <laughs> God was telling me, Jesus was telling me, this is important to read. Follow me to read it, Rod. <laughs> okay, Jesus. And uh, I know people can stumble because they can't understand word meaning. But a good way to do it is to have, just listen to it on audio and maybe have your Bible there in the same length, uh, the same wording as the audio and maybe mark down some good parts as you're listening to somebody else read it and it's not stumbling over the words of it. And being in a prayerful state, God teach me something from this word today. And it's like when you've been a Christian for about 33 years like me, you've learned a lot over those times. Well, it's like me going into churches or something. They want nothing to do with what I have to teach. It's like the pastor does it all and the congregation does nothing. <laughs> and that's terrible for the church today, but that's what they want to do. They turn it into a pastor's career or something. But that's what people choose to do. <laughs> a lot of times you just got to live like Noah, trying to obey God yourself when nobody else is, and uh, watching God judge them in his time and in his way. <laughs> just concentrating on your own obedience to God. In the future, God might raise me up to be some kind of a truth teacher to a axe type church in times of tribulation, doing miracles. But uh, that's not right now. So what God tells me to do now is just keep learning truth, make some good truth teaching videos. You can use these to teach people in the future if you ever find people that really want to learn this stuff in the city you're living in. And you can learn stuff making these videos. <laughs> What's important, the topics to think of, how to uh, explain them to other people. And uh, you can just listen to them on audio. That's probably better than watching the videos. You're just doing housework or something, listening to Rod's truth teaching audios or outside doing things. Getting some truth that way. Or put the Bible on audio and listen to that. <laughs> and not just be listening to worship music all the time without some good teaching too. I know it's hard to find good teaching, but uh, if you follow Jesus in front of you, he'll lead you to some good stuff. And uh, he can lead you to becoming what he wants you to be. If he wants to be a truth teacher through you or something, let Jesus do it through you, then that's a possibility. 
If he wants you to be a prophet or a teacher or evangelist, if you let Jesus do it through you, you can do it successfully. So that's what I'm trying to explain, that uh, God can give visions to people. You can just pray, just close your eyes. Jesus, I want to be close to you. Help me to understand you're with me. Help me to understand what you want me to be doing now. Like the Bible says, Jesus said, I'm always with you. Jesus is in this room right now. He's probably in my body right now. It says in the Bible that God is with you wherever you go. This is, but what do you think God is? Is he just some kind of weak old man or something like that that you got to help out because he can't help you or something? An old security guard or something, half asleep? Or is he the God of the universe in control of everything at all times? Like he is. That he's exciting, he's all powerful. That he has a really awesome love for you. That he died for you. That he gave his son for you. It's through reading the Bible. It's through hearing God's voice. See, if you don't read the Bible and learn truth from it, you don't know how to discern God's voice from Satan's voice, and you get all deceived about who God is or what he wants you to do. you got to judge what you're hearing by, oh, that lines up with the, the truth God's taught me from his word in the past. So these people are... In, a lot of trouble if they don't read the Bible. Not hearing God's voice, not doing His will. Being deceived easily. Like I said, you can listen to it on audio if you want to. There's different ways that God can help people to understand His Word. Not just be leaning on other people to teach you the Word all the time, because they're usually half wrong. So... Like I say, like it says in the Bible, draw close to God and he'll draw close to you. If you seek God with all of your heart, you'll find him. In God's presence is the fullness of joy. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, and peace. It's like uh, one vision I had recently. I went to this church service. It was terrible. <laughs> I was sitting at this table by myself. And God gave me this vision of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the angels sitting around my table with me. That made me feel good when I was worshiping. Then I kind of had this vision of Father God like a giant behind me, and I looked up at him, and I was like a little kid or something like that. And uh, he put his hand on my shoulder. He says, I really love you. I like what you're doing, Rod. I'm with you. There's just a sense of peace that you can't, under you can't explain. When you have this kind of hearing God's voice and maybe seeing pictures, the pictures are more like a cartoon or something. It's not really seeing God or the angels or the Holy Spirit. It's just sensing, oh, there's some beings here, and uh, it's the Holy Spirit, and it's Jesus, and it's the angels, and it's the Father, etc. So that's what I encourage you to do. If you haven't read the Bible yet, try to get through it <laughs> on audio, maybe. Maybe listen to some of these kind of teachings on audio. Um, be open to uh, God. What do you mean by visions in the Bible? If you want to give me some visions, I'm open to them and see what God does for you. In a prophetic way, too. Actually hearing his voice in a powerful way, like God spoke to Moses by the burning bush, or God spoke to Paul on the road to Damascus. Or God spoke to Isaiah in a vision. That's, that can be very powerful in our life. It's like uh, the closer you get to God, the more knowledge you learn. It just keeps expanding. It doesn't shut down unless you want to shut it down. And uh, it can help you to get closer to God and help, can help you to obey God more. So that's what we need to do, is to put Jesus in the picture. Look at the scriptures. Jesus said, I'm with you now. I'm always with you. Look at the scriptures. My sheep hear my voice. 
Jesus is here now. He's invisible. He, we can hear his voice. He might give us a vision of him to teach us something about himself. And that's a very awesome experience. When you have awesome experiences with awesome creator God, exciting God, you couldn't care too much about the world around you. That's just a bunch of dust that fades away. It's the spirits and people and God the Spirit that see exciting stuff and Jesus, the Holy Spirit. It's like uh, God's grace could be sufficient for whatever our problems are. I could be blind and have a great experience with God. I could be in a wheelchair and have a great experience with God. I could be in the physical condition I am in now and have a great experience with God. I don't have to be limited by am I healthy and wealthy? Is God my good genie or not? Which is a bunch of lies. But um, the real Jesus in an evil and suffering world helping you through it, bringing good out of it for you, making you happy in it, helping you not to be bothered by it. So that's what I encourage you to do, is to try to have a consciousness of God with you, of Jesus with you, that you can hear his voice, that he might speak to you in visions, that he's trying to lead you to get into the word and learn great things from it, so you can hear his voice and discern his voice better and be in a spiritual war but not lose it, win it. Don't believe the lies, believe the truth of the Holy Spirit's voice or Jesus' voice instead. So that's a bit about put Jesus in the picture.